Welcome to Clark & Associates video tutorial taking a behind the scenes look on how a prosthesis is made. The first step in the process of fabricating a prosthesis is acquiring a mold of the human body part that we are trying to interface the prosthesis with. In this case, it's a gentleman that we are fabricating a lower extremity or transtibial prosthetic device. Once the prosthetic liner is applied and bony points are marked and measurements have been taken, a circumferential wrap with fiberglass is used to solidify the shape and capture the contours that the prosthetist is uh, attempting to incorporate into the prosthetic device. Once the negative mold is approved and uh, worthy of moving forward, we then visit the CAD CAM aspect of our production process to digitize the inside of the socket, which creates a computer generated image in 3D that our computer software can manipulate and further shape to the prosthetist guidance. Once the digital image or di digital shape is complete, that image is sent to the carver where a three-dimensional foam model of the limb will be carved. Here at Clark & Associates we have a history of being one of the earliest adopters of this method of uh, fabricating the diagnostic uh, prosthetic socket, although there are many other ways to do the same thing. We feel that this method allows us to make adjustments in the future and track our actions with real data and science as opposed to some of the older school method that relied on uh, judgment and educated guessing and hand manipulation of plaster molds. The foam blank has been mounted into the carver and we will see a video of uh, the carver milling its shape in a matter of seconds. In real time it would take 10 to 15 minutes uh, compared to the old hand handmade version uh, which could take up in some instances hours. So it's not only time saving, it's more accurate and it's more trackable. Once the model is carved, it's moved out to the technical room where the technicians will heat up a sheet of plastic so it forms a bubble, invert the bubble over the mold, gently manipulate the plastic down the model, and engage a vacuum. The vacuum pulls the plastic to the foam model in an airtight fashion, ensuring that the exact shape that we've created via our digital modification is now captured in our first usable diagnostic prosthetic socket that can be fit to the patient. Once the plastic is cooled, the technician will trim away the excess to expose our initial trim lines and the socket will be ready to be mounted to the additional prosthetic components prior to fitting. As of recent, 3D printing is slowly building some momentum in our field, but as of yet, it's not readily used on a normal basis. The trimmed and finished diagnostic socket will be quickly inspected for safety and sharp edges and then ready to be mounted to the other existing prosthetic componentry. Often we use the guidance of lasers to ensure that our alignment and weight lines are appropriate in accordance with manufacturer's recommendations. While engaging the patient on what they feel and, and the sensation they're getting from the prosthesis, the prosthetist and patient work to make minor adjustments to the test socket to maximize function, fit, and comfort. Once these areas that need additional attention are marked, the prosthetist will then return to the lab to make minor adjustments before any significant ambulation or, or gait evaluation is performed. While in the lab, the prosthetist has access to certain specialty tools to feather and further adjust the trim lines and shape of the socket for appropriate fit. This makes it difficult to perform this task outside of our office. Once the adjustments have been made, uh, the socket is reinforced 
and we are ready to apply the whole prosthesis and move forward with our gait uh, analysis and feedback from the patient on how they perceive the prosthesis feels. This portion of the fitting process is by far the most important and at times can take hours and even days to ensure that the physics of the prosthesis match what the patient is feeling and the desired outcome. We thank you for taking the time to watch this video on how a diagnostic prosthesis is fabricated. Uh, we hope it gives you some perspective on the time, uh, depth, and number of people it requires to uh, bring these devices to life. We are now ready to move forward with the final steps of fabrication.